Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on a new unit and uh, this unit will be on polynomials. So we'll be talking about operations with them like addition, subtraction. Uh, in this video we'll be doing that later on. Later on we'll be talking about multiplication and division and then we'll get to some other types of concepts um, after that. But I'm going to start with the basics as I usually do and that would be definitions of polynomials or how to recognize what we will and won't be working with. So. Um, a, a polynomial is a combination of monomials, things that are one term. Poly means many, mono means one. And to discriminate or to decide between what we will and won't be looking at, there are some things that do not count as polynomials, and that will be found by whether the variables in your expressions, if you have any variables that is, the variables in your expressions, do they have exponents that are positive and whole numbered? So for example, things that would not uh, count as polynomials or monomials would be x to the power of negative 2. We won't look at any things that have um, exponents that have a negative in them, at least not for the variable. Um, we won't also look at any division or fractions with variables in your denominator until we get to division where we might have some remainders. Um, but at least at the beginning of our expressions, if we're trying to simplify something, they won't involve division with variables. We won't have any fraction exponents as well, and uh, we won't have any square roots. These are non-examples of polynomials, and uh, if you ever have just one part that violates one of these principles, like for example 5x squared minus 3x to the first, uh, negative first plus 8, 5x squared would be a fine monomial to look at on its own, and positive 8 on its own would also be fine. But because this middle part here violates one of our rules, again, we're looking for expressions that do not have any negative exponents, don't have any fractions for those um, variables. This will not count as an example of a polynomial going forward. Okay. Now some things that would count as examples are listed below in green. Negative 5x squared. The number in front, that coefficient, that can be negative. That can even be a fraction. Okay? But uh, the exponent for your variables cannot. That positive 2, good sign. Plus 3x, that's like plus 3x to the power of 1. Okay? And that's also a positive whole number, so that's fine. And then minus 4 off to the side. If we don't have a variable, we don't have to worry about variable exponents. So this would be an example of a polynomial, as would this example number 2 below it. Okay, now it looks a little bit weird. Again, we have a negative, but the negative's in front, not in our variable exponent, so that's fine. We have a fraction, but again, not in our variable exponent. That's a whole number, positive, it's a two, so that's fine. We have a square root as well, minus square root of three x. Again, that's an invisible exponent of positive one, so that's fine. And uh, plus 10.1, that decimal, again, only matters if we have a variable, and uh, in that case we don't. So these are examples of polynomials <clears throat> that we might be working with um, in this unit. Now, now that we know some of these polynomials that we might be looking at, what's going to help is to look at some key features of polynomials. For example, uh, we always want our polynomials written in standard form, and that means from the highest to the lowest exponent in order. So sometimes we have to rewrite our expression a little bit to make sure that those are in order. In this case, you can see that both of these examples are written in the correct order, right? Negative 5x squared plus 3x to the invisible first minus 4, no variable there. Okay, so 2, invisible 1, no variable. That's from uh, highest to lowest exponent. You're putting them in descending order. Same thing here. 4, 2, 1, no variable. All of those variable exponents are ordered from highest to lowest. That's always the form in which we want to write our expressions because in order to find a lot of these different key features, it's going to be more useful to have it written that way. Um, and we'll see why that is going forward. But um, if I'm trying to identify the lead coefficient, that's always going to be the number multiplied in front of my variable that has the highest exponent. For example, the lead coefficient for number one here is negative five. It can be a negative, it can be a positive. In this case, it's a negative five. That's what you're multiplying in front. So if this was out of order, let's pretend that negative five x squared was originally written towards the back end of this expression. We would need to rewrite our problem first 
because we don't want the wrong lead coefficient. The lead coefficient is not positive 3. Even if this was towards the back, we would have to rewrite it. Standard form comes first. We always rewrite our problems uh, first if we need to. Lead coefficient here, by the way, would be negative 4. Again, what's the number you're multiplying in front of your variable with the highest exponent? Now, coefficient in general, like if I wanted you to find a coefficient of x, it just means what number are you multiplying in front of x. So the coefficient of x for number 1 here would be a positive 3, and the coefficient for x here would be a negative square root of 3. You always want the sign in front included. The coefficient of x squared here is 6 over 5. So whenever you're thinking about what a coefficient is, it's just the number that's multiplied in front of some specified uh, variable. But I will make clear which one that is. So coefficient of x or coefficient of x squared, etc. Now if I said the uh, coefficient of x cubed in this problem, by the way, that would be a zero. There is no x cubed, so it'd have to be a zero. Uh, and that takes us to <coughs> the degree and the number of terms in our polynomial expressions. And these are important, not just because they're important features on their own. They also help us to identify names of polynomials, as we'll see shortly. So the degree of a polynomial is just what's the highest variable exponent in your problem. So this one would be highest exponent of 2. For number 2, the highest exponent would be 4. Those are your degrees. Okay. Um, the number of terms that you have comes from how many parts you're adding or subtracting together. So for example, um, we have one, two, three parts that we're adding together for number one, negative 5x squared, positive 3x, negative 4, three different parts to your problem, therefore three different terms. That's going to help us, as I said, to identify the names of our polynomials. So I'm going to flip this around a little bit here. Let's take a look at what some naming of polynomials will include. So uh, not only do we have polynomials, we have specific polynomials, and we want to be able to identify them by their names. Now, I think a lot of this material you've seen before in Algebra 1, which would be good. But if not, we'll go through each of these um, briefly. <clears throat> Basically, you have two different names that you can ascribe to your different polynomials. One comes from the degree, one from the number of terms. Now, the one in green is a little bit more simple, I think. Um, if you have one term that you're looking at, that'll be a monomial. Two terms, think bicycles have two wheels, that'll be a binomial. Nomial means term, bi means two, two terms. If you have three terms like we do here, right, one, two, three things that we're adding or subtracting together, that'll be a trinomial. So this is gonna be for number, uh, example number one, I'll run this whiteboard, that's a trinomial. And if you have four or more terms being added together, so you could have five or six things being added together, at some point we're just going to call it a polynomial. Think poly means many, so many terms are being added together. Um, this would be an example. One, two, three, four things being added or subtracted. That's a polynomial. Okay. So number of terms, that's pretty easy to find as long as you know those prefix names. Mono, bi, tri, poly. Um, <clears throat> The other types of names that we need to know are degree names. So for example, what happens if we don't have a variable in our problem? What happens if we just have like a, I don't know, negative 8 or positive 42? Those are constants. Okay, in fact, that's a constant monomial because it's just one term. There's no variable there. There's no variable exponent. Um, a linear expression would be something like you saw in Algebra 1. Maybe an example of that would be 5x minus 2, right? Two things that we're adding together there, therefore it's a linear binomial. Okay, linear because, again, that degree is a uh, 1. That's the highest variable exponent. Quadratic expressions, we saw these in our last unit, right? The uh, um, previous unit on the quadratic formula, factoring, completing the square, etc. That's when you might have something like 2x squared plus 8x minus 5. That would be a quadratic trinomial. Three parts there. Okay. Don't you know, forget that you have two different names, so that is quadratic, but it's also a trinomial. Cubic, an example of that would be um, something that has a degree of three, so I could write uh, this. That would be a cubic um, binomial. Quartic, think quarters. There's four quarters in a dollar. I could write. Um, 
6x to the fourth plus uh, 1, right? That's a quartic binomial. And uh, quintic, I could have negative 9x to the fifth degree of 5. That would be a quintic monomial. There's only one term there that we're not adding or subtracting with anything else. So the main part I think that students have a bit of difficulty with is the Q's. Okay. Just try to keep straight that quadratic, think quadratic formula. You'll always have a degree of 2. Quartic, think quarters. Okay. That's a degree of 4. And the last one there, the only one left has to be quintic. That'd be 5. So those are the names of your different polynomials. They'll all have two different names. So in this case over here, we had a quite, uh, quadratic, excuse me, trinomial. Right, two different names. One comes from your degree, which was a 2, highest exponent. One comes from the number of terms that you had, that was 3. Tricycle, 3 wheels, trinomial, 3 terms. <clears throat> okay, so now that we know that, let's take a look finally at some addition and subtraction problems, and then be able to identify key features of uh, the results. So I have an example of addition over here. Um, subtraction over here. And for addition problems, we'll have two main things to think about. Number one, we need to make sure our expression is written in standard form again. That means highest to lowest exponent. 3, 2, invisible 1, 0. 3, 1, 0. Okay, they're written in order. That's good. Then what we're going to need to do is to combine like terms. That's step two. How do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to match exponents and add our coefficients. So what that means, I like the column method of adding, by the way. You're welcome to do it in another method if you like. The column method is just going to ask us to line up our expressions uh, up and down, matching each of those exponents together where we can. Okay. So for example, this is my first expression rewritten, and then the column method would have me look at negative 8x cubed and match that to 5x cubed. They have the same exponent. So we're going to match them or line them up and down. Now over here, we had uh, 2x squared, but we don't have any x squared over here. That means that we're not going to add by anything. You could add by 0. That doesn't change anything. But we're not going to add by any other type of number. You could leave that blank if you wanted to um, as well. Basically, when we get to our final answer and add up and down, that 2x squared is going to stay by itself. Okay. Negative 4x obviously lines up with x and 5. The number matches up your other number, your other constant. Okay. So we've uh, matched our exponents. Now we're going to add our coefficients. That means add the numbers in front of your variables. So for example, 5 plus negative 8 or 5 minus 8. In this case, would be negative 3x uh, cubed, okay, don't forget the sign there, 5 minus 8 is negative 3, x cubed. We don't change our exponents here. Next week we're going to see um, multiplying polynomials, instances where we do have to change those exponents a bit with the product rule. In this case we don't. We're just adding or subtracting our coefficients. 2 plus 0 is 2, and invisible 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and negative 9 plus 5 is uh, negative 4. So this would be the result of when I add my polynomials together. Matching those exponents, adding those coefficients. If I wanted to find certain things, first of all, this is standard form, high slowest exponent, that's good. If I wanted to find the degree, I would look at my highest exponent, which is a 3. If I wanted the number of terms, I would look at how many things I'm adding or subtracting here, and I have one, two, three, four. Okay. That'll tell me the name. As we saw earlier, that means we have a uh, cubic polynomial. That would be the name of this result in our answer. Four terms there. Four or more means polynomial. Degree 3 means cubic. Uh, the leap coefficient, something else that we've talked about, what's being multiplied in the front of our largest variable, it's a negative 3. And let's say I wanted to find, for example, the uh, coefficient of x squared. 
Okay, what number is being multiplied in front of x squared? That would be a 2. So that would be one result of how you could combine like terms through addition. And that leaves us with um, subtraction. So subtraction and addition are very similar. One difference here, okay, and uh, that difference will be the very beginning. We're going to add by the opposite. We're going to distribute a negative. Basically, we're going to take that negative sign, change it to positive, and then all of the signs in our parentheses following that negative will change. So this is very similar to how we subtracted complex numbers in our first unit. Same principle here. Um, now, first of all, don't forget to be watching out for parts where you need to rewrite your problem. So I should have pointed out, and this is good to note, that we need to write our uh, problem in standard form. So this is where it's out of order, right? That x cubed should come after x to the fourth, and the earlier you uh, switch those, the better, I would say. Reordering things just helps you match things up later on. So let's rewrite this a little bit. Okay. And then uh, we'll also notice that later on we need to switch these parts or these terms because again they're out of order. Now while we do that we're going to also be distributing our negative. So um, <clears throat> we have a negative here. We're going to change that to a positive. And that means all the signs in our following parentheses will change. The negative here will turn to positive 2x to the fourth. The positive 3x cubed will change to negative 3x cubed. The positive 5x will change to negative 5x. The negative 7 will change to positive 7. All of those signs changed in order that we may now combine like terms just like we did a second ago. Okay. Using the column method again would be just fine. Um, now everything's written in standard form from a highest to lowest exponent. That's very important. Okay. So starting my first um, row. Okay. Take a look at your next parentheses. What can you match? And actually everything here matches. You don't need to leave any blanks anywhere, which is fine or good. Uh, we have a positive 2x to the fourth. Negative 3x cubed now negative 5x and positive 7. All those columns matched up, exponents matched up. Now we add the coefficients. So a negative 2 and a positive 2 are going to cancel out. Sometimes that happens, it's okay. It just means there's no more variable involving x to the fourth. Instead we'll have negative 4 minus 3 which is negative 7. Be careful, that's not a positive 7. That only happens if we're multiplying with our negative uh, times a negative. In this case, we have a negative minus a negative, not negative times negative. That should be a bigger negative. That would be x cubed. 1 minus 5, negative 4, x. And we have a positive 15 at the end. This is the result of what happens when we um, simplify by subtraction. So to answer some of those things that we talked about, those key features, once again, the degree here is a 3, right? Highest exponent is a 3. We have three terms. The number of terms is 3. We're adding uh, or subtracting negative 7x cubed minus 4x, positive 15, three different things. That means our name will be a cubic trinomial. You should always have two names. Lead coefficient here is a negative 7. And let's say the coefficient of x uh, coefficient of x is a negative 4. Okay. Not x cubed, the coefficient of x is negative 4. The coefficient of x to the fourth Zero. We don't have x to the fourth anymore, right? That canceled out. Coefficient of x squared, we never had x squared. That's also a zero. That's a bit of an introduction to polynomials and uh, their operations. We'll talk about multiplying in our next video, and I hope this helped.